welcome to IIT Bombay and welcome to this course on aqueous corrosion and control. Uh, here the courses are most likely to be more interactive and object oriented courses because you are not going to have uh, too much of uh, you know routine and textual information. So, rather than you focus on the fundamentals of uh, the subject. And uh, this course uh, all of you know is an aqueous corrosion and its uh, control. It is a postgraduate course mainly taken for MM4 we call it corrosion science and engineering. But the students from other disciplines within the department outside the department they do take this uh, course. To briefly introduce myself, um, I work in the area of uh, corrosion science and engineering. I give quite a bit of focus on electrochemistry and corrosion. You will see later how important it is to understand electrochemistry and corrosion. There is quite a bit of interrelation between these two. Then I also look at corrosion mechanisms at the atomic level, microscopic levels related to materials of course. Uh, I have wide range of interest in materials uh, mostly metals and alloys and we do some work related to coating. Of late we have been focusing quite a bit on stress corrosion cracking. We will see later that uh, stress corrosion cracking is a very important uh, subject for any materials integrity ok. Yeah. So, this course uh, today lecture is basically to introduce you to the subject of corrosion and uh, to give an outline about what we are going to cover in this particular course. We are also going to discuss and outline what are the uh, evaluation method that you do uh, for grading your students. So, that you get a clear idea about how to proceed, how to prepare for the course. However, I would like to say that do not prepare for the course for the sake of grades. I think uh, that is not going to help you in the long run ok. What is going to help you in the long run is what you have understood. So, that you can apply them in, in the field and for that you need to understand the science and you need to understand the technology. You need to understand the relation between the science and technology. And uh, how many of you have seen corrosion problems or failures. Uh, how many of you have seen? One, two. I thought everybody would raise the hands you know. You have not seen? At least you see the newspaper that the bridges collapse and so and probably it is attributed to corrosion ok. They may or may not and uh, rusting is quite common right. I think rusting is quite so common. You might have seen steels being used for various purposes. Uh, it is a very, very extensively used material for, for various applications like be it a fence, be it a reactor pressure vessels or be it a uh, transportation sector, pipelines. Steel is very common and steel of course, all of you know that it rusts ok. But then if you rub it off and you see that yeah, everything looks fine you know it is not really a problem. But it is not really that problem, it is much more. The corrosion is just not confined only to steels, it is confined to all kind of materials which are made by human being. We will see that shortly. So, before we start discussing about corrosion, probably you should know 
what is corrosion and why does the corrosion occur? These are the primary questions that haunts everyone's mind and you like to know the answer for that. And this not answer a clarity is required actually. What exactly mean by corrosion? What is the clarity in that ok? Now, corrosion why it becomes important? Because you have seen wherever that is a material that you have ok. Materials without material there is no civilization right. It is used for you take a mobile to take a laptop or ok or you 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 go to anywhere I think ok. Material of construction is the important one for human civilization. So, the, these materials are used for various engineering applications when they come in contact with that we call environment here ok and they start interacting with each other leading to what is called as corrosion process. But these materials are just not freely hanging you know it is not like I have a beaker I put sodium chloride in that I will hang a sample it is not. These materials are for structural applications right they may carry, carry a load could be a tensile could be a fatigue or whatever or it might be a container to store a sulfuric acid for example, still it is applying certain pressure. So, the materials are designed for a certain function that the very design itself alter the course of corrosion. So, that is a change the way the corrosion occurs that is why we always worry about design and try to relate the corrosion of a reactor or a system to the material to the design in the environment. It is actually it is a failure it is just fails it does not run function. Can we then say whatever component that you see is failed for example, can you say it is it is due to corrosion? What are the failures that you are aware of? Can you tell me and talk about the structural failures right? What are the failures? Yeah, yeah it could be a simple a overload failure you know I simply apply a load beyond the ultimate tensile strength the metal deforms and it, it, it fails not necessarily corrosion right not necessarily or you heat the material beyond the melting point or whatever it fails ok or you have simply a wear and tear it fails. So, not all the failures are related to corrosion no it is not. It is, it, is not, it is not correct to conclude that corrosion is the only the mode of failure. Corrosion is one of the modes of failures, but of course, it is a predominant failure that happens in various industrial uh, components that we see that. Now, then how do we really define that? The way to define here I made it very simple you can have your own way of defining things as I told you you need to rewrite the way you think. So, this definition is the I have written my way in way of writing it actually. So, when I say corrosion you need to have a material and you should have a chemical environment coming in contact with this. Only when the metal fails we call them a corrosion failure. I can have a plastic failure taking place because of gamma radiation right, that is not a corrosion failure it is a physical failure. So, I need to have a chemical environment that is the primary requirement to call the failure as corrosion. So, that is very important you need to understand. Why does it important? Because the failure leads to loss of materials there are several definitions the loss of materials if it fails there could be casualties can happen. Primarily if you look at from 
operational point of view there is a loss in the function of the component. When I say the function of the component it is very important to realize that it is not necessarily leads to leak it is not necessarily should have a crack still there can be loss of function. I give two examples uh, anybody from mechanical engineering background here ok you know about the heat exchanger right. So, heat exchanger it exchanges heat between two fluids could be a gas or could be a liquid and you have a cell side you want liquid and the tube side is another liquid and you transfer the heat. Assume that there is a corrosion very small amount of corrosion leads to scale formation. Scale is a thermal insulator structurally it takes all the load no problem, but the exchanger is not functioning because of corrosion leading to loss in the thermal conductivity of the component. I give an example other one which you are more familiar with right. You have seen lot of electronic gadgets right you have pins connectors you have and if there is a small rust and you put the connector what will happen? The current will not pass so, so easily there will be resistance is ok, but it loses function. So, corrosion when you talk about is not necessarily a structural failure any loss in the function efficiency of the unit that you talk about that is a concern for us, but that problem should be as a result of corrosion and the corrosion is coming because of what because of the material interacting with the environment. So, the definition of a corrosion should be should encompass all this whatever way you write it whatever way you want to convey it ok. The chemical environment is key material is other key and the loss of function is other important key the definition of what corrosion means is. Now, why would the metal corrode? It's a question that happens to us most of us. It is not in equilibrium with the nature it is a very very nice question a nice answer I would say it is not equilibrium with the nature. Now, most of the metals and alloys that you deal with you know can you tell me example of what are the alloys used for structural applications yeah be little louder hmm? steel is one aluminum is the other one magnesium titanium what is common to all this material it's common because it is a man who made them or who makes them from the ore into metal right. You take platinum gold what is common there it is naturally available. So, how do you make this material how do you make this metals is the origin is the ore that you have here talk about the ore is is in the earth crust you have and the ore is nothing but oxides, chloride, sulphates all this compounds. You convert this into metal how do you convert it? You convert by providing energy right you provide energy reduce this the energy of this is increased because of the conversion from things ok. So, the energy of the metal is higher than the energy of the ore what is natural is that what goes up has to fall down that is nature's law the physics says that. So, when it interacts with the environment what happens it goes back to this original state here. So, what drives the corrosion the free energy change that drives corrosion. So, engineering materials that we deal with more specifically the metals I would say if, if they do not corrode you may get surprised ok. Not surprised that most of them will undergo corrosion process corrosion is a very very common thing. Now, what is what is then corrosion means ok. What is this corrosion means? Corrosion means and you have metal it comes in contact with the environment now what is happening now 
see there is an oxidation process. I have given an example as ion here. In the process, the electrons are deposited on the metal surface, the ion goes into solution. Now, look at this, the reaction is not going to continue, right? It does not continue at all. Why it does not continue? Why the ion cannot continue to oxidize? It stops here. Why does it not? Why does it stop? Yes, because the surface is enriched with the electrons, negative charges, it loses its neutrality, the reaction does not continue. So, for corrosion to occur, what happens? You need to remove these electrons from the surface. How do you remove that? You remove it by the environment. You see now here what happens? It releases two electrons, it is accepted by the species in the solution. Here the example I have given is H plus. The H plus take the electrons and the reaction continues. So, it is a chemical reaction occurring on the metallic surface. There are two sub reactions, two partial reactions you want to call it. One is an oxidation, the other is a reduction process. Both of them have to occur. If only one occurs, the corrosion will not proceed. It might happen first two steps, three steps, but corrosion does not continue to occur. It is a very important thing to understand. This becomes a key to understand not only to understand corrosion, to control corrosion also, right. Suppose you are not an engineer, you are a common man sitting on this, somebody gives a lecture now. He says, please tell me from this, how do I control corrosion? Can you tell me how to control corrosion? I have to use steel, but I need to control corrosion. How do you do that? How do I do this? Do this. Well, of course, but I, I of course I can give a coating and all, but I cannot. I have, for example, pipelines carrying water. How do I do that? In electrons, so in fact, the answer comes from that. You have given one of the examples, your coating, you put electrons to that, you said actually, one person will say, what will say, please remove S plus from the electrolyte. In a boiler, can you give a coating? If you give a coating, what happens? Thermal conductivity is a problem. You cannot do a cathodic protection. What do you do there? You simply remove the H plus. How do you remove H plus? By turning the solution into an alkaline solution, the pH of the water is increased. You do that. So, what I am trying to say, if you know the principle, it is easy for you to devise new methods. You do not have to read what I am saying, do not have to read what Fontana says, you can devise your own methods. The basic is very important in advancing the technology. I think you should really do that. One way you are seen again in the day to day life, right? You are seen how, how, how do people store sodium? Kerosene, right? They put in kerosene, right? How does the corrosion is stopped? Yeah, in kerosene, why no corrosion occurs? There is no interaction, the air is gone. Secondly, there is no free H plus in water in, in, in this particular environment, no corrosion, very simple, ok. So, it is for us to understand what the corrosion, how need to be tackled at all actually. Now, to summarize what you have seen so far, you have metal, it comes in contact with the environment here. You have an oxidation of the metal taking place, right, releasing electrons on the surface, and from the environment, you have a species, it comes and accepts the electron here and gets reduced, and these species can be H plus, metal ions, oxygen, and so on. So, do not understand what are these electron acceptor reduced species, do not worry, the course is meant for that. Okay, to, to make you understand. I am trying to only trying to tell you how the course is going to evolve, what we are going to address in understanding the corrosion process. Now, as you have seen before, 
thermodynamically most of the engineering alloys the structural materials are bound to corrode right why because the energy of the metal is higher and any time it can fall it can corrode can you ever completely stop from corrosion you cannot forever you cannot forever kind of stop it what we, we can do is you can slow down the corrosion process right i take long time i take more time for the corrosion here okay take long time right so we have a steel pipeline the pipeline can last for let's say 25 years engineering it has served the purpose for us actually so how do you how do you study this? what is the science called what is the science called this science is called the kinetics the first one we talked about the thermodynamics the free energy change and then this is called the kinetics so this course will devote time in understanding the kinetics in fact the kinetics are the most important thing in controlling corrosion because thermodynamics says i am helpless you are using materials which are supposed to be corroding okay so this kinetics we are going to spend quite quite a large amount of time so that uh, we can understand the mechanisms that gives us a way to control corrosion of metals one of the ways to control corrosion we are talking about a coating the metallurgists do right how do i control corrosion of a steel from from a metallurgy point of view yeah it forms corrosion oxide okay i form a film on the surface you seen metals there outside you have a lot of things there right steel how they prevent corrosion you apply a paint coating a barrier coating the metal can develop its own barrier oxide coating right and how does it happen you have metal here it comes in contact with the environment here what it has to do it forms a film on the surface and this film is a barrier for the environment to come in contact with this so this is corrosion same as see all of us know can you give another example of a, a reactive material having high corrosion resistance yeah aluminum to certain extent other one anybody anybody can have, give an answer have you heard of titanium an example of that titanium is very reactive okay it gives you in fact titanium titanium is more reactive than aluminum but it gives you better corrosion resistance okay it forms a oxide films so you can develop a noise based on that so all this we talk about the kinetics okay so the course okay uh we'll spend about 10 to 15 lectures on the electrochemical corrosion thermodynamics and kinetics about 10 to 15 lectures we'll do this okay we will see some examples and there will be some problems to solve so that you can understand how the kinetics are happening on the metal solution interface please see all happening at the metal solution interface we don't talk about what happens in the electrolyte it is on the interface okay so we talk about that actually things are not that simple right if we have to simply talk about electron transfer it's so simple to corrosion control you don't need a big subject you don't need a lot of consultants you don't need you don't need a specialized uh, you know engineers to tackle the problems the reason is very simple the materials are fabricated into different design you know one of the slides i told you the material the environment design come into pictures illustration here right what is this this is a heat exchanger right a heat exchanger for a power plant we call it co generation done in one of the petrochemical industries you don't want to waste the heat you extract the heat and convert it to steam and use for various purposes 
the heat exchangers right it is a shell you call it what do you call this call the tubes right. Now, look at this this is tube and tube sheets these tubes are welded to the sheet here these are welded now that means, now you start welding what is welding joining right of course. How do you people join thick welding what happens during a thick welding no metal is melted joined together. Metallurgically there are changes the location where you join it has a different electrochemical properties compared to surroundings. Corrosion there same thing electron transfer takes place all, but the solution there is different ok. I am not saying that electron transfer does not takes place reduction does not takes place, but the engineering solution to the problem is different the mechanism of corrosion is different. And so, you have to look at corrosion from a different perspective of what you call as a different forms of corrosion we will see later. A similar thing we have seen right this is a reformer unit right? one of the refineries is served of course, about 14 to 20 I think about 14 years is served and they have found that there are some bulging uh, slide is not so clearly visible. So, there is a bulging they sectioned this and they saw you see that how it looks like this sectioned plate you see looks like a fish mouth and it is a different type of failure and this failure we call them as hydrogen damage hydrogen blistering they call it. What does it happen? When you when you take a steel and put it in an environment hydrogen evolves there is a corrosion, but one more thing happens the hydrogen enters the steel and gets into the material it affects it. In this case the hydrogen got accumulated now you see now we are getting to a different dimension of the problem. The primary cause is corrosion the secondary cause is the real reason for failure. If the hydrogen has not gone into this the corrosion was very minor had the guidance has not gone into it minor. Now, this is a different kind of problems how do you solve it? So, this is called different mechanism we call hydrogen uh, damage in the broader sense of that. You can see oh, you know this is a kind of a, a, a kind of uh, you know pipeline you see here in a refi refinery they are all insulated right with a lot of insulators it carries a lot of um, lot of um, uh, steam inside actually high temperatures very nearby here only this refinery was located and it is a nozzle there there is a nozzle here the nozzle is a crack you cannot see this so clearly these things it is cracked. What was the material? The material was stainless steel huh? material was stainless steel and see how the crack was the crack started like this start branching. They thought stainless steel is a better one, unfortunately, not actually, ok. And the cracking took place around you see, this is a weldment. If you are a metallurgist, you know this is a different microstructure here, different microstructure here, there is a cracking taking place from the so called heat affected zones take place. You know what the solution for that was? We are not using better material coats and thin coats, solution was using steel not a stainless steel. How do I come to the conclusion? You need to understand the mechanisms. It is in your view stainless steel is better compared to carbon steel it is not correct always. If you want to illustrate this further, tell me how do I store how do I store chlorine gas? You might have gone to swimming pool, they use it for bleaching, right? What, what kind of cylinders they use? They use simple carbon steel cylinders. What if, if I use a titanium? Is not it? So, titanium is prone to cracking, but the same chlorine gas, I add small amount of water in that, I make it wet chlorine. The carbon steel cylinder will not work, the titanium works there. <coughs> the reason being in water, 
the titanium forms nice oxide film. That is the reason why I said you need to understand the science otherwise you simply cannot go by intuition what really happens to the materials at all. So, that is what I think you will see in this course. So, different kind of failure uh, we have seen one of the chemical manufacturing company is an agitator arms you see this here because of the jet here impingement the corrosion occur the velocity is one factor. The corrosion occur in a, in a tank is different from corrosion occurring in a pipeline or a nozzle or, or maybe an impeller things are different ok. Sometimes people misunderstand issues. It is an example of how people do not read the fine prints. What is the difference between a martensitic steel and a martensitic stainless steel are both the same or different composition wise right. The martensitic what is the difference between a martensitic steel and a steel what is the difference heat treatment what is the property you get in a martensitic steel high hardness good erosion resistance right all this will happen. Martensitic steel will give you good wear and tear erosion all this, but you have an environment corrosive environment the martensitic steel is no good at all because that is going to corrode very high. So, people use for pump applications martensitic stainless steel not martensitic steel. Here is a case it was somewhere in Siberia it happened one of the company which is a, a French company located in India ok who went for the overall plant over here they used in the pump a martensitic steel instead of martensitic stainless steel. They really notice oh this is really a problem why you know here what is the liquid here is simply it is not a really hazard you know very interesting actually it is called a condensate you know in a hydrocarbon what you do suppose you get a LPG gas right you may have water what happens you have to separate the water and then take the gas out that is called as condensate right. You condense and remove the water from the process liquid and that water is being pumped here you know very interesting thing that water is more corrosive than the water you have in the pipelines it is a pure water you see why later and they got worried you know what they did they start using two pumps alternatively one after another right. Oh I said why do you use alternatively because any time it will go if I order a new pump with a martensitic stainless steel it may take not less than 6 months. Now, without this pump if the whole unit cannot run what is the cost of this pump so small compared to shunting the whole plant for about 6 months. They thought ok so there is erosion corrosion let me work alternatively. I said uh, so, we did some lot of work and uh, to find out what happens and all, but at the first instance I told do not use two pumps alternatively why if you shut one pump down there is a water inside keep corroding all the time. Shutting pump does not mean that you do not have water inside. So, please do not do this at least keep it dry you have a problem you start running out after about one month ok. Then you shut the other one dry it you start running because you know what really happens and all. So, we did of course, some calculations about the pH all this and then found yes I think you run a pump for 3 months continuously one case and another case run for 3 months another case. I think you can sustain the production for 6 months by the time you can buy a new one. So, sometimes you have money, but you cannot do anything at all the loss of productivity takes place ok is one of the issues. Very similar issue is the refinery uh, is again close to us simple condenser tube in a refinery uh, they were using sea water. Sea water you cannot use uh, carbon seal you know because of high velocity the problem you can't use stainless steels they start using 
copper nickel alloy, it is called cupro nickel alloy, right? Alloy, and they found in the inlet portion there is a erosion corrosion taking place, very low velocities. I am not going to give answer for this, please look for answers when I am teaching this course. That means you understood subject of I am just raising the questions now, ok. Now, this is the velocity, it is called inlet corrosion taking place, it is a real problem. In fact, every uh, you know fortnightly they used to pull the tube out and then plug it and keep doing actually shutting off and then it used to cost 10 million rupees per day because you cannot do anything at all. So, one day finish one day means 1 crore rupees is gone for that. So, cost of the tube is less, but the consequence productivity is quite quite a huge amount of loss you will see. Now, it is this is not the structural thing, it is not just function, there is one more, ok. I do see a car, right. If I am talking about a car like this, oh, structurally is very good, I can drive, no problem. Who will buy the car if it is rusted? It looks so bad. Nobody will, nobody will buy the car, isn't it? Now, the GM or some of these companies, you know, they give guarantee of. 12 years of, of rust free coatings, the technology has developed over a time period. So, aesthetics are important. Why do you coat nickel on some of this uh, you know steel plates? Because you want to have good appearance. You go to washroom, you see color, some of these uh, you know fittings are extremely good looking actually, right? Because appearance is also is equally important, ok, and that can get damaged corrosion problems here. Corrosion is real problems, ok. This is another aspect of why corrosion should be controlled and again if you see very interestingly you know you need to look at it. You see what is this, what is this, why does the red color appear here? It is chipping actually the stone hit and coating, paint coating broke and you have rusting here the rust color. You see here also, you know, there are some blisters taking place, there are blisters taking place, this is called blisters, ok. And the blisters occurring because of the cathodic reaction or I would say a reduction reaction, we are not told about what the cathodic is, I think it is probably very appropriate for me to say a, a reduction reaction. Because there is alkalization reduction reaction here, the corrosion takes place. Corrosion problem not only associated with oxidation, sometimes the corrosion problem structural failure can occur if some cathodic reaction occurs, reduction reaction occurs on the surface. This also will be a problem is taking place, ok. This is another thing that really happens. I have given this example pipeline, I think uh, some of you would have seen it. See here, this is internal, this is external, entirely different. The internal corrosion depends on what? Depends upon the water chemistry, water it is going to be used. In this case, the corrosion occurred because of microbes, we call it microbial corrosion taking place. place here. But here, the, the outside, we expose the soil, the soil chemistry is entirely different entirely different solutions are different from that ok. So, corrosion can be very complex ok in 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 a single single structure ok. It can be different depending upon how the environment is really exposed to. There are so many reasons why corrosion should be seen and I have shown this here which has happened uh, within India ok. It has got larger impact in terms of you know in terms of problems that we face. The two accidents happened here right, the right side you see here the gas pipeline happened about a few years back ok and it caught the fire. Why did the leak occur? The primary reason was corrosion of the pipeline and you know a lot of casualties you know see 18 people were reportedly killed and 40 injured 
<laughs> this is the kind of problem that you can have actually. So, there are cases where we call penny wise pound foolish. We do not really do things thinking that we can save the money, the money is not really saved. In fact, the money is spent more, you destroy the environment. You not only destroy environment, it also a matter of sustainability, right? You you have a steel. How long the ore is going to last? How long the natural gas is going to last? Okay. Or if you are going to pollute this environment, how long is it going to happen? Okay. The question of sustainability, depleting resources. Sometimes as a metallurgist, I will develop a better alloys. As a mechanic engineer, I design a very nice structures, but corrosion does not tolerate. I say, oh, I want to use magnesium because it is one of the lightest engineering metals, right. People still use it, right, I think, but then magnesium is very highly corrosive, is not it. In automobiles, or transportation sector people use magnesium, but if you know of any of the chemical industries magnesium is also used as a sacrificial anode, it corrodes and use that. How can you reconcile both? That is the critical thing that we talk about. The technology sometimes cannot be advanced unless you take care of the corrosion control, that is the important thing. And of course, the process becomes less efficient, loss of profit can't have the production at the profitable levels. Now, as we have been talking about industrial things are very complicated. Materials are subjected to fabrication. On the process side, they are subjected to temperatures and pressures. They all contribute to various different forms of corrosion, a complex forms of corrosion. An example here, this is one which I, I went, I, I have done a, a consultancy work for one of the industries, right. See, this is all fabrication, I have done it, right. You just cut open this and see the one weldment here, another weldment here, this is called a seam weld. Seam weld is getting corroded. The stainless steel is ok here, ok here, the seam place is suffered corrosion. So, the corrosion is complex. So, there are different types of mechanisms that we have and failures are different. Some examples of mechanisms are given and not all of them. We have seen this before, it is called hydrogen induced cracking. Hydrogen gets into the material and then builds pressure and cracks. This is called stress corrosion cracking. When you apply a stress and you have environment, it cracks. You know, how it cracks, it is brittle. What is the, the ductility of a typical 316 L stainless steel? Anybody here can tell? Ductility, this could be 60 percent ductility. That is why metals are used. In the environment, the ductility in terms of percentage elongation can draw from 60 percent to 10 percent, 5 percent, almost acts like a ceramic now. So, it become brittle, there are brittle failures. You have what is called as a crevice corrosion, right? You have mechanical joints, you have flange joints, you have rivets, right? It undergoes a different forms of corrosion. We call them as the crevice corrosion, another mechanism that we have. Okay. You weld it, the grind boundaries of the stainless steels become very reactive. We call them as sensitization, another form of corrosion called intergranular corrosion mechanisms. Just now we have seen it, you have microbes induced corrosion here, there are microbes, uh, different forms of corrosion mechanism. Okay, and it is called a cavitation damage. It is a, it is actually what is the engine block actually for a ship. Okay, 
and because of constant vibrations you know and bubbles form and then the impact leading to failure is called as a cavitation damage. You can have a pitting look at this here a pitting corrosion taking place only localized form corrosion. So, we started with a simple concept of corrosion what is that metal exposed to the environment leads to two kind of reactions one in oxidation where the metal releases electrons and the environment picks up that electron here we call it reduction process in all corrosion process is taking place. But the way this reaction occurs can be very complex. The solution to these problems are different. So, you have different forms of corrosion in Fontana book it calls it calls as 8 forms of corrosion uh, you may not agree with it I also may not agree with it you may call 9 forms and 10 forms and 12 forms of corrosion. When you say mechanism why you call a mechanism when I say mechanism that tells me how do I counter it is not it. If I know the mechanism I put an obstacle for the movement or the process. So, the mechanism is different ok and the solutions are different. So, that is what is to be seen. It should be seen in the light of the fact material selection when you talk about or any industry is a very talk about aerospace or talk about a car or the pipeline or a pressure vessels. You go to a mechanical engineer or design engineer what does he first think? He first thinks about he or she will think about what thinks about oh what is the strength? What is the toughness? Ductility is it wear resistance? Is it dimensionally stable? All oh, fashionability all this. If you are going to a other kind of guys who are making devices like that oh what is thermal conductivity? What are magnetic properties? Optical properties. Corrosion does not figure in material selection more often industries. Oh I have a very nice glass borosil glass does not corrode can you use it? Can you go and tell a mechanical engineer that? Oh, he said you oh, are crazy guy. He will say oh I want to use magnesium can you provide a solution for that? So, corrosion engineer you provide solution where the metal is or metals are expected to corrode. So, how do you prevent the corrosion? So, that is the science of engineering of corrosion so, look at that actually ok that is what I think you do that. So, this course is to show that the corroding metals can be safely used at a definite time without corrosion failures. So, is it that trivial problem or here is there some electron some welding and what is so big about is this is it really a problem what is impact? You ask your question counter way can you tell me an industry a system where you will not find corrosion. Can you just tell me can you just point out one industry where oh there will be no corrosion huh? glass industry. If you want how do you know how do you make uh, glasses? Glasses are melted right is melted in what? Melted in various steel retorts corrode. In fact, one of the interesting thing you know I was giving one of the consultancy service to the company making glass for the cars you know for car and you have that nice glass in the coverage right. You start melting and it is just you know deteriorates over a time period that corrosion of course, is called high temperature <coughs> glass of course, it does not have. But the glass is not eternally right if somebody is going to use hydrofluoric acid for his own purposes can you use a glass? No people use Teflon. In fact, those industries which deals with HF you know what they use? They use monal it consists of copper and nickel the glass is not going to work. So, it is only safe to say that those industries which are not using materials metals will not have a corrosion problem, but can you find an industry which is not using materials and metals not really likely to happen. Where does the corrosion problem occurs? It occurs 
almost all industries talk about all industries using metals and materials or own tire corrosion problem. The extent of corrosion changes a chemical process industry a petrochemical industries a fertilizer industries for example, may have different aerospace industry may be somewhat different other transportation industry may be different the nuclear industry may be different, but I do not see that there are any industry would not have any corrosion problem at all. So, long as they use metals and alloys I mean engineering metals and engineering alloys. It has a great impact I have shown this here I have taken this from uh, this uh, you know there is a document called uh, you know ok impact studies done by NACE international it's very recent 2016 they done it. They shown that the loss to the nation is about 3.4 percent of the GDP ok. Now, if you look at the western countries like you know maybe France or UK or even Japan what is the growth rate of these countries? Many of them less than 1 percent hard to get that. So, there is a significant impact in terms of corrosion that happens at all because the cost that you can cost you know you can have to a nation is quite quite significant it contributes and of course, India you have about 4.2 percent that, that the, you see that. So, corrosion is not trivial is just not confined to only one industries it is just not see replacing materials oh I use the glass I use the titanium I use this you cannot find the solution at all. So, there is a science that is engineering very important in order to fix the problem and it is even more important and the technology evolves actually ok. The technology evolves what does it mean? You know in India about few years back the thermal power plants were all subcritical thermal power plant they called subcritical boilers the mechanical engineers who know about it right. The pressure of these boilers less than 25 mega Pascals. Now, you want to raise the pressure more they call supercritical boilers. Now, they gone into ultra supercritical boilers why are we doing this? The efficiency of these thermal power plants will increase significantly not only that the carbon footprint the emission control is can significantly reduced if it increases violet temperatures and pressures because the efficiency of of heat transfer becomes very high. You cannot raise the temperature you cannot use the same steel the corrosion problems faced by these industries are different from the boilers the way you do water treatment is different. So, as the technology evolves with the time the same methods of corrosion control may not work the same understanding of corrosion of materials may not work it changes. So, corrosion control is evolving because the technologies are being grown you know the apple, apple phone iphone they use on the cover you know this is what used this, this is what magnesium right it being used magnesium. How do you think that magnesium can be used because you know how to have good coatings to that. So, as you develop new technologies you are on the threshold we cannot afford to allow corrosion. Yesterday I was into one of the industry here ok I do not want to mention the industries it is uh, super critical within 3 months started failing the heat exchanger in about 5 months they had 3000 tubes in heat exchange tubes 1400 tubes are plugged because each of them start cracking they were very happy earlier now they are not very happy because the technology has changed you cannot use same way of corrosion control taking place. So, there is a need to change how to do that we need to understand the mechanism the mechanisms are going to be there. So, the next part of my course we have about 25 lectures we deal with the mechanisms various forms of corrosions. When you know the mechanisms it is for you you can figure out what are the parameters that affect corrosion under each cases right. 
if you know the parameters affecting corrosion, you can devise the control measures yourself. Do that. You do not have to read the book. If you know the basics, you can devise a test method yourself. You do not have to again go to the book. You can devise a test method. Okay. Of course, we also give illustrations to show how these failures occur in industries, these illustrations. So, this will be the, the second part of this uh, course and do that. And uh, I have these books here, I can share this uh, slides with you, you can you do not have to take this notes of this. As I told you in the beginning of the course, I will use Fontana as the main line you know of the lectures ok. It is it has got a lot of industrial component here. I also refer these books actually ok and Ulrich book is a, is a good book it spends uh, quite a bit of the chapters on uh, mechanisms the fundamental understanding. The fundamental book is not really uh, that one actually is not happening at all ok. And uh, if this is a uh, Stansbury and Buchanan, if you are going to be interested too much on electrochemistry, thermodynamics and kinetics and all this stuff, this is an excellent book actually, you can refer this book. Or you are going to do a project later more involving electrochemical experimentations, that is a good book to refer to ok. And uh, you want to go again straight into more and more deeper, you can also look at book on test corrosion cracking theory and practices are about 80 some 20, 22 chapters by various experts across the globe. Uh, industrial problems also, you want to go into more realistic problems and all, I would recommend the book corrosion failures theory case studies and solutions. Of course, you do not want to go anywhere. I Want to be really lazy? I think you can look at this ASMAN book. It is huge collection of. So you have fundamentals, volume A, volume B on materials, and volume C is on what on industrial problems. Of course, each of them maybe thousand five hundred pages. Okay, so all put together probably about close to about five thousand pages will be there. I think something like that. It's a nice book, and uh, you know any time that you can refer it. Okay and uh, lots of I do not know more than 600 authors or maybe more have contributed to this particular uh, book actually uh, volumes I would say okay, it is good. So, these are the things I think uh, you you can really do. In addition to that and you are interested in some research there are journals available you know corrosion is one journal, corrosion science is another journal, corrosion uh, engineering science and technology is another journal. We, we are getting these journals in our library. There are journals related to fuel materials, actamate and all you know, actamaterialia where you have corrosion and it is available, you people can read it. You have very nice collection of books and journals in, the, in, in our library that that should help you a lot actually. And I think we have now come to end of today's lectures ok. Mm -hmm.